I made almost 50% profit in only 14 days using fully automated bots on Binance. If you want to know how you can set up your own fully automated bot on Binance, stay tuned because in this video I will be giving you a full breakdown of Binance trading bots. Binance recently introduced a new section on their website called Strategy Trading. Strategy Trading gives you an overview of all the available trading strategies on Binance. It also offers the ability to copy the trading bots of other people. The two most popular trading strategies used on Binance are spot grid bots and futures grid bots. Binance also offers some more sophisticated trading strategies like TWAP or VP. These are mostly used by whales and I'm not going to cover them in this video. I'm only going to be focusing on spot grid bots and futures grid bots. Now, if we take a quick look at the strategy pool, you can see of an overview of the grid bots that other people have been using. And you can look at both spot grid bots and futures grid bots, and you can filter them to any pair you would like, to how long they've been running, to the overall rate of interest they've been making, or you can filter the coins to a specific zone. Now down here, when we look at spot grid bots, you can sort them by the rate of interest, profit and loss, or by the copy popularity. Now, if we sort by the rate of interest, you can see the first bot is a grid bot on GMT BUSD that has made 899.16% rate of interest only 133 days. If we scroll down and we have a look at the futures grid bots, then the first one with the highest rate of interest is a BNB USDT futures grid bot that has been running for almost one and a half years and has made 1,570.36% rate of interest. Now, when you see these numbers, these look all very intriguing and very insane. The question now really is, if you copy these bots, are you going to make the same profit? And when you set up your own bot, is this kind of profit really replicable? One thing I'm always noticing when I look at the overview of these bots is that even though the rate of interest are extremely high, the profit and loss in US dollar is very small. So all the bots that are running here that you can see here have been started with a very small amount. The way I would actually look at this is not to sort by the rate of interest because these numbers are way too high for it to continuously work. I prefer to look at the profit and loss that has been made. For example, if we look at the bot with the highest profit and loss, this bot has made $110,915.72. But the rate of interest has only been 3.88%. Now, this rate of interest at a first glance looks very small compared to the 800% we saw just before. But you have to keep in mind this bot has only been running for 15 days. And so this bot has made around 0.26% daily, which is still an insanely high amount. And with the rate of interest and the overall profit and loss, we can actually calculate with how much money this bot has been started. When we calculate the total amount that this bot has been started with, we come up with a number of over $2.8 million that this bot has been started with. In the spot market i personally would be way more comfortable copying a bot that has started with 2.8 million dollars than a bot that has started with only a couple hundred dollars and was probably just some random experiments that worked really well now if you've never used grid bots before i'm gonna give you a full breakdown of how you can set up grid bots and how they actually work a grid bots only consist of a bunch of settings and they're very easy to set up. Most people still use them the wrong way. With grid bots, you have two main settings that need to be set. First one is the lower price and the second one is the upper price. Whenever you want to use grid bots, you should always be looking for certain coins that have been trading within a range. Let's have a look at Bitcoin so I can show you what I mean with trading in a range. If you look at the Bitcoin chart right here, you will very quickly notice that there hasn't been a lot of movement to either the up or downside, but it has been trading within just a very small range of the price. It is, this has been going on for almost four months now. If you look at this, we can draw the lower limit line and the upper limit line, and we will quickly note this, that Bitcoin has been trading within this range for the past four months. But these are the upper and the lower price or upper and lower limit that you need to set. For example, on my grip, what I'm using, I've set my lower limit to 18,000, my upper limit 
to 25,000. Now, when you set up and create this grid bot and you start it, the grid bot will only be trading within this range. If the price ever goes out of this range, the bot will stop trading. It doesn't necessarily stop working. So if the price goes back in, it can start and just trade uh, normally again. Uh, but there's also an optional setting that you can do where you can set up a stop loss or a take profit. So whenever the price, for example, goes out of this lower limit, your bot will stop working so you don't face any losses. This is what I've set up on my own. So my range is from 18 to 25,000 on my BTC grid bot and I have a stop loss at $500 below the lower limit and then also $500 above my upper limit. With this, I'm expecting Bitcoin to trade for a longer period of time within this range. And if Bitcoin ever goes above or up this range, then my bot will stop working. It will stop itself. It will close all positions and I will get back to my original invested currency plus all the profit that I made. With this, I can just re-evaluate if I still want to use the bot or if I want to wait until another range is forming. Now what actually happens when you set up a grid bot like this? There's still a third thing that you have to set which is the number of grids that you want. I'm gonna skip this step for now but I'm gonna tell you everything about it after I've done this full example. Now on a grid bot what happens is that if you start the grid bot right now every grid level above the current price will be a sell order. I'm gonna set up only a few grids so we can make this example a little bit easier. Every grid level below this price is going to be a buy order. So these are just limit orders that are set in the order book as soon as you start the grid bot. When you start the grid bot, you need to have both currencies in your account. So if you want to start the grid bot on BTC USDT, you need to have Bitcoin and you need to have Tether at the same time. If the price is going up, and a sell order is executed, we need to have the Bitcoin so we can sell the Bitcoin. If the price goes down and we want to buy Bitcoin, we need dollar or USDT to buy the Bitcoin. And so this is why whenever you start Gridbot, you actually need both currencies in the spot market. Depending on where the current price is at, and how the sell and buy grids are split up, the ratio of the currencies you need might be slightly different. For example, we only have two buy grids, but we have four sell grids. So we would need double the amount of Bitcoin. Then we have Tether. On most exchanges, you actually don't have to worry about buying the required amount of Bitcoin, buying the required amount of USDT. But on Binance, for example, if you set up a grid bot, you can just say, hey, I want to start with $1,000. And then the bot is buying the Bitcoin that are required and leaving the US dollar that are also required. So you don't have to to worry about buying the exact amount that you need before starting the grid bot. Now once we start this grid bot, first thing that happens is going to be nothing because we will be waiting. Now if the price from this price point goes up to the first grid sell level, what will happen is that we will sell a certain amount of Bitcoin and we will make our first profit. What happens is that this order will be hidden in the order book because it was executed but a new grid will be created one level below. And this will now be a buy grid. And now we are just waiting again. If the price, let's say, trades within this range and it goes up to another sell grid, then the same thing will happen. We will sell more BTC, making a profit. This level will be hidden and a buy level will appear down below. Now let's say the price doesn't go up, but instead the price goes down. Whenever a buy grid is hit, then we will buy Bitcoin. This grid will disappear and a sell order one level above will be added. And so in this way, the grid bot actually places limit orders within the range that you've set up. And the big advantage of a grid bot is that you're actually making profit on very small fluctuations of your price. Now we can also play through both scenarios of a stop loss. Now let's imagine that the day after this candle was closed, the price goes down like this and it just breaks below our stop loss and stops the bot. On the way down, what will happen is that we will buy and buy and buy more BTC. But once it reaches our stop loss, we will sell all the Bitcoin in a small loss. The goal is obviously that once the 
bot goes out of this range and we sell in a small loss, this small loss will be way smaller than our profit. Now the biggest risk that you are facing is that there's a sudden dump in the market where it really goes straight down. Most of the time this doesn't happen. Most of the time what will happen is that it goes down, but it goes back up so you can sell a grid again making your total BTC position smaller. And then once it breaks through and all your Bitcoin are sold, the position is very small and you will make a smaller loss. On the other hand, if the price doesn't go below the lower limit, but instead the price shoots up like this, what will happen is because we've set up a take profit right here on the way up, we will always sell our Bitcoin. And so in the end, we will be left with no BTC at all, but we will just close and stop the bot with having our full dollar amount back plus all the profit and no beat. In the futures market, this is slightly different. In the futures market, you actually only need dollar to start. And whenever you go up to a sell grid, you're not actually selling your Bitcoin position, but you're shorting BTC. And so in the futures market, what can happen is on both cases, when you go up or when you go down very quickly without having a small step down to fill grids, you will actually face a loss because on the way up, you're just building up a short position instead of reducing your BTC position like in the spot market. So with a futures grid bot, you should be more careful. Another risk that you will face when you use futures grid bots is that you can get liquidated. So if you use a futures grid bot and let's say you have a leverage of 20x, then you can use 20 times the amount of money that you actually have. So you have a way bigger profit potential. But if the price, let's say, goes up 5% from right here, so only up until here, the whole position will get liquidated because you have 100% loss you're going to face and then your uh, grid bot will stop working. So whenever you want to use futures grid bots, first thing you should do is you should calculate the range of your entire grid, which in this case is around 45%. And then you should use a leverage. So when the worst case scenario happens, you still don't get liquidated. And so with a 45% range, you can use a 2x leverage and you don't have the risk of getting liquidated ever. If you use, let's say, a 5x leverage, the risk of you getting liquidated is still very small because the coin needs to go up 20% without going down for you to match the grids. But there's still a very realistic chance that this will happen. If you fully want to avoid this, use this calculation. If you want to be a little bit more on the aggressive side, I recommend that your highest leverage should be around 20x. Anything above that, you will definitely get liquidated at some point. Now let's talk about the number of grids that you want to set up. There are a few factors that play into this and you should always have a look at your own exchange. I'm going to be doing this example for Binance. If you use it on another exchange, then you have to look up the conditions on your exchange. Now on Binance, you can set anywhere between two to 150 grids at the same time. The reason why it can't be more than 150 is that the maximum number of orders at the same time is only 150. So if you set up 150 grids, you're going to be 150 orders in the order book. And that's the max that you can actually have. The second thing that plays into this are the trading fees. The more grids that you set up, the more trading fees are going to apply. If you set up 150 grids, the gaps in between those grids are going to be way smaller. So the profit that you will make per grid will be smaller, but you will still be paying the same fee. And so what often happens is that people don't respect trading fees on their exchange and they just use the max amount of grid numbers that are available. And they are actually building a money burning machine because they are making less profit on every grid than they have to pay for the trading fees. And so you're actually just losing money on every trade. Since we are on Binance, you get to trade Bitcoin completely for free. So if you set up 150 grids, you don't have to face the chance of you building a money burning machine because if you never pay fees, then you could go for any amount of grids that you want. Now, if you only set up two grids, we can do an example right here. In this range, it would look something like this. Now, the first thing that happens when you do this is that the range between those grids is very high. So to go from the buy grid down here to the sell grid up here, it's around 17.74%. To go down, it's around 15%. So these are very high moves than you need to be able to match the grids. Once the grids are matched, you will make a bigger amount of profit, but it will obviously 
take a longer time when you have more grids like in this example all your gaps between the grids are way smaller and you can take advantage of smaller fluctuations in the market so before on the example with two grids the range was 15 to 17 percent this example if you want to go up to another grid it's only around two percent if you go down to another grid it will also be around the two percent mark and so in this way, you will have way more trades. Therefore, you also have more trading fees. But on Binance, we don't pay trading fees. And you will make smaller profits on each grid. But the chances of the coin just simply dropping below the lower limit without you getting to fill a grid are way smaller. Because most of the time, what will happen is that the price goes down. It goes slightly back up. It goes down, slightly back up, down, slightly back up, and then goes down. And whenever the price is slightly going up, this is the time where we can actually match the grids, make our position smaller, and we'll end up with a smaller loss once it hits our stop loss. Now, one last thing I want to add in terms of the grid numbers is that the more grids that you have active on your grid bot, the more initial investment is needed. So this was a full breakdown of how grid bots work what settings you have to do. And now I'm going to switch over and create a grid bot with you together on Binance. And once you're here on Binance, you can go up to trade and strategy trading. And this will get you to the overview where you can see all the active spot and future grid bots. And then you can just go to create strategy and you can choose if you want to create a spot or a future grid bot. And then you can just click on create. Whenever you want to create a grid bot, there are two ways you can do this. Either you can fill out the settings automatically via an AI. You can set up a time period. The way that this works is that Binance will look at the last 730 or 180 days and it will do some calculations on what the lowest price was in the past and what the upper price was during this time period. And it will set up the lower price, the upper price, the grid numbers and the profit per grid. Now, if you don't want to follow the automatic settings, you can just go over to manual and then you can set up a lower price in this case. Let's set up my bot with 18 to 25,000. So down here, we can set up any number of grids that we want. And for example, if we set two, we can have an initial investment of $41.28, but with 140 grids, we will need 1,600. So the more grids that you want to set up, the more investment is going to be needed. And down here, it's a little hidden, but you can open the advanced and then there's the stop loss and a take profit. My stop loss is 70,500 and my take profit at 25,500. And then you can check sell all base coins on stop, which is what you want to do. This is whenever the price goes below your stop loss, you want to sell all your Bitcoin so you can get back to your BUSD in this example, plus all of your profit. Now, if you want to set up a future grid bots, the settings are all the same. There's just one additional setting that you can set up, which is if you want to have a neutral grid, a long grid, or a short grid. A neutral grid will consist of both long orders and short orders, so buy and sells. With that, you would expect the price of Bitcoin to trade within this range, and you don't particularly bet on it going up or it going down. When you set up a long futures grid bot, you're basically betting on the price of Bitcoin going up. And when you're shorting, you're betting on the price of Bitcoin going down. Now then you can also choose if you want to use isolated or cross margin. Cross investment would mean that you're using all positions under the same asset. So all your BTC positions would be used for calculating a liquidation price. And if you look at isolated, you will always be using only the amount that is open on the same trade. Then you can also specify a leverage. Again, the highest leverage I recommend is somewhere around 20. Def I would definitely never go higher because you will get liquidated. Then once you've set up the bot, you can see your running bots right down here where you can see how long they've been working for, how much profit they've already made. You can share these bots with one button to your friends who also want to try them out and you can have a look on your details to see the current active grids as well as all completed grids and you can have a look at the grid details where you can see just a summary of all of your configurations. Now I'm going to be leaving the link to my futures grid bot in the description down below. If you have any questions or you want to know more about futures grid bots, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you next time again.